It was all in the wrist when cartoonist Chester Gould first outfitted Dick Tracy with a two-way radio watch back in 1946. And it's all in the wristwatch today as manufacturers try to dazzle us with gadgets like this smartwatch. Yahoo's David Pogue takes their measure. The history of computers has been a steady march towards smaller. Computers were once the size of rooms, then the size of TV sets, then the size of phones. In fact, computers are now so small, they nestle quite nicely on your wrist. Eat your heart out, Dick Tracy. Six to an even, over and out. A good way to think about a smartwatch is a companion for your smartphone. Because a lot of us look at our, at our phone up to 100 times a day. So a smartwatch could actually save you time. Mark Spoonauer is the editor-in-chief of Laptop Magazine. He's reviewed most of the first smartwatches. Cool. So yeah. and I want to sure. send you a text message <laughs> and see if it'll show up on there. Okay. Sure. Hey, Mark, Dash, you have spinach in your teeth. <laughs> oh, I hear something vibrating. Come on. <laughs> it actually works, huh? That's right. Although you can't respond from your wrist, that's when you have to get out your phone. So that's why it's more of a companion and not a replacement for your smartphone. All right, give me a show and tell of what the latest are. Sure, so this is the Pebble Steel, and what we like about this is that there's an available app store for it. Excuse me, it's, it almost sounds like you said you're gonna download apps to your watch. Yes, you can. And there's some big names behind it, like uh, CNN and ESPN and Yelp. Okay, so this is the Sony SmartWatch 2. There are 300 apps available for this, including Facebook. You probably haven't seen a lot of smartwatches on real people's wrists. So far, it's been more hype than sales. Maybe it's because they're still so bulky. I mean, it's like wearing a VCR on your wrist. Or maybe it's because you have to charge them every couple of days. Or maybe it's because they're just unnecessary. I mean, you've got your phone right here. How much effort do you really save having the same functions on your wrist? But there is one area where having electronics on your wrist makes tremendous sense, and that's monitoring your health. This one's actually measuring my galvanic skin response, which is like another word for your sweat. Bob Troya is part of what's called the quantified self movement, using gadgets to monitor your own health, stress, sleep, and fitness. I just want to understand all the components that are what constitutes me and, and what's going to help me become a better person. I've been known to occasionally wear one of these all day. Bob has embraced this idea of self-tracking in a big way. He has devices that monitor his posture. You'll feel a little vibration. It's like, hey, sit straight up. Inhale, exhale. His breathing. You wear this over your head. You his brain waves during sleep. Draw a drop of blood. Among other things. Clearly, there's big money in health tracking gadgets, and that may be the key to building a hit smartwatch. Samsung's first smartwatch, the Gear, was clunky and complicated. But its sequel, the Gear Fit smartwatch, has a secret weapon. Because there's a heart rate monitor built into the bottom of this device, and it'll read it right from your wrist. Wow. Samsung isn't the only tech giant with plans for your wrist. Google has just announced a new operating system for smartwatches. What's the Syracuse score? Motorola just announced the first round smartwatch. And then there's Apple. Its watch plans are secret, but it's been hiring fitness and fashion experts. This technology battle has just gotten underway. Analysts expect us to buy 500 million wearable gadgets in the next four years. In other words, this is a battle for much more than just a place on your body. This is a battle for your loyalty, for your data, and for your dollars.